Yeah. Yeah. So what about somebody who is already an entrepreneur? They're mm-hmm. already in business. Let's say they've been in business for five years, but they're not feeling it anymore. They are feeling unfulfilled and they don't have that miss business about them where they are just like willing to pivot. What's your advice for that person? Like, how do you know when it's time to pivot? Okay, so there's a few times when you know it's time to pivot. The first time you know it's time to pivot is when you're not being fulfilled, right? So I always look at everything as I have one life, and that's my favorite line. I'm like, I have one life. I'm not dealing with this, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's a little dismissive sometimes, but it's true. It's so true. I have one life. Am I going to spend it unhappy? But again, you do have to make the correct decisions at the same time. So I think sometimes most people are failing because they don't have the right tools, they don't have the right resources, and they may not feel fulfilled because they're not succeeding. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that may happen. So I guess it depends on where the person is. If you're succeeding and your business is at its pentacle, but you are like, "Mm, I'm not fulfilled, then it may be time for you to pivot onto something else. And if you built one business, I believe if you give an entrepreneur, like if you're an entrepreneur at heart, if you built $1 million business, you could build another one, right? And faster. And faster. But if it's a situation where you, you're you not fulfilled because you feel like what you're doing is not working, you may need to sit down and really analyze why it's not working. Because a lot of times in business, we as business owners don't realize that we're the problem. Mm-hmm. And we have too much ego to really admit that it's us and not really focus on, okay, these are my issues that I'm projecting on my business, right? Ooh. So like for me, I learned that quick. Like I am very like, I don't want to deal with this. But I'm like, I can't do that Not all the deal time, with that, right? Yeah. So, and it's still an issue for me sometimes. But I know that's my issue, so I hire people. Work through, Listen, uh, yeah, yeah. Look, when I hire. Through, we yeah, you work I, through it. I'm yeah, you work you through it because sometimes it's something that you don't want to change. You don't mm-hmm. have to change everything. Sometimes I don't want to deal with certain things. So if I don't want to deal with it, that's fine. I'll just hire but somebody, somebody has to, deal to with deal with it. it. Yeah. Right. And so I'm consistently analyzing my business, analyzing my revenues, analyzing my expenses, analyzing my employees. And that's what's needed. And I do feel like in order for you to really succeed, especially as a small business, you have to be willing to consistently pivot, Mm -hmm. pivot to stay uh, current, pivot to um, add additional services or just perfect the services that you have because those services that you started out with, you're going to be looking back like, oh my God, people really gave me money for this, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> so And knowing that what you start with is not what you have to stay with. Yes. Like you don't have to be a slave to this thing just because you built it. And a lot of times our ego gets caught up in it. Like we've branded it. ourselves as this thing or people only know us for doing this thing. Mm-hmm. So we just get stuck even though we're unhappy. And I always say like, you didn't quit that job to, to be a slave for yourself like you did not do that entrepreneurship is all about freedom like that is what we're doing this for so um if you are feeling like this is not for you it don't have to be for you you have the freedom to to you have the freedom to change it and i love that you also mentioned like sometimes it's you sis like Sometimes, sometimes it's you. Sometimes it's not the strategy. It is you. Sometimes it's you holding your own business back. And you have to be willing to accept that. And we've had conversations about, like, the emotional things that we bring to our business that, you know, your your emotions, your mental health, like, all of the things when you are an entrepreneur, oh. especially if you're a solopreneur, yes. or even not, if you're leading a team, like, if you don't consistently work on yourself, you can literally, like, sink the ship. Yeah, that's so true. I think that people, um, a lot of times when they have these have a business, especially when they're trying to do everything themselves, like you are hurting your business. I tell everyone, as soon as I used to talk to clients and do onboardings um, in my business, and of course, onboardings is discussing pricing. As soon as I stopped discussing pricing and sending out invoices, my revenue increased. You know Mm -hmm. why? Because it wasn't necessarily that people were asking for discounts. But if somebody came to me and they're like, oh, my God, I haven't filed my taxes in three years. And, um, you know, I really need to file them. Mm -hmm. But, oh, my God, I know it's going to be, like, so expensive. Or I don't know. I know I'm going to have to pay triple the amount. I'm like, girl, don't worry about it. it We'll work it out. Like, I'll just charge you for, like, two years. And then that's fine. My employees do not care. Like, the numbers are the, the numbers. The you price. said three of that. Yes. You said two of that. Okay, you... Because they don't have that emotional... I mean, it's like when no you work emotion. at a job. This these people money. Like, I, I'm going to collect what they don't care. And if you're not happy yes. and you want to walk away, they're like, 
I've done what I was supposed mm-hmm. to do, so I understand. Yes. You you know, so I do feel like a lot of times we have no choice, of course, when we're starting out to be that person that's in the business. But I'm stressed out all the time because I'm like, oh, my God, I have to pivot. Oh, my God, I have to add this new person. Oh, my God, I have to, you know, hire this person. I have to look for this contractor. Okay, um, are we expanding in this particular department? And mm-hmm. do I need to bring someone else in? But if you have a mindset where you're like, oh, I'm just, I want a business. I want to set it and forget it. You're going to be going nowhere fast. Yeah, the set it and yeah. forget it. So I think one of the biggest challenges um, in entrepreneurship is going from solopreneur to, like, leading a team. It's hard. Primarily because what I think is like the hard part is delegating. It's like when you're so used to doing the things the way that you are used to doing them, how do you trust someone to come in and do the things the way that you've been doing them? So what is your advice for someone who's struggling with delegation? You need to create processes mm. because a Come lot on, of Connie, times, Connie yeah, S. yes, Connie as false. That's my girl. She helped me with it. my yes. Yeah, she helped me with my system. So, um, I one thing that people, what I always say to somebody, if they're like, this person isn't getting it, or this person is doing it wrong, it's like, it's your fault. Mm-hmm. It's you your didn't fault. explain it to them mm-hmm. because if you give someone direction, you can't say that they're not getting it unless you said to them. Do A, B, one, two, three, and then they did A, Z, P, H, I. Mm -hmm. But if you never gave someone direction, then it's your fault because it's your business. It's what you want them to do. And so a lot of times, most people, we hold on to that where it's like, I want to do it how I want to do it, and no one's going to be able to do it how I do it. If it's a personality thing, you can go through that, right? Like I know, for, for instance, in my business, I know that I can close... My team, I have a very high close rate in terms of when people come into my firm. We're probably at like 80%. Mm -hmm. I know that if I was there, it'll probably be like 95%, but I'm willing to let that additional, you know, percentage go because I can't be in my business in order for it to grow. But a lot of times, if I say to my team, this is how I want you to onboard, these are the systems, this is what I want you to do, this is how I want you to do it, they're going to do it. And if they don't do it and I've documented what they need to do, I can then go back and reassess where they went wrong. Mm -hmm. But if I'm just like, hey, girl, pick up the phone, do this onboarding. Get it how you live, do it how you do it. Do it how you, they're going to do whatever it is that they want to do. And whose fault is that? That's your fault. (laughs) That is your fault. It's not their fault. You know, so I definitely think that people have to focus more so on their processes. Um, And I always tell people from the beginning, even when it's just you, document what you want. Document how you want things done. Because, like, for me, I've just spent a lot. Two years ago, I sat down documenting my processes. Literally, this. Well, tax season was over in April. From April all the way until now, I'm docu- re-documenting my processes. I'm not Ooh. playing with my processes because I can't play with them because in order for me to get out my business, and most people aren't looking at it like that, in order for me to get out my business, I need to be able to come back to you and say, you didn't do this. Mm-hmm. And I'm very big on that. I'm like, if I didn't tell you, it's not your fault. I can't assume that you're just going to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Because most people who have that figure outness about them, like they have their own business. They're out, they're out here operating their own thing. That's the thing. It's like if you wanted someone that was going to lead the business, then you... They got their own business. They're not an employee. Yeah, yeah. They have their own business. And so you have to document... I mean, you have to document things so that way people have like a blueprint to go by. hmm so yeah hard pill to swallow it's you sis this whole interview is you sis look <laughs> in the you. mirror look in the mirror okay yeah. so when we were talking about your pivot you mentioned like a CPA you can't just go to school for four you gotta go to school for five so I wanna talk about the difference okay. between a CPA and an accountant because as entrepreneurs I feel like it's you know we know we need somebody to keep these books we know we gotta have somebody file the taxes but who like who's the right person to be able to do that so what's the difference perfect so a cpa it's it's a certified public accountant because i people will butcher cpa i done heard all the cra- yeah i done all heard the C's so and the P's. crazy some crazy words and terms but it's a certified public accountant and pretty much the requirements to become a cpa it's 150 credits so about five years of school um so me i have um a dual bachelor's degree or i could have my school was hating on me i was trying to get my master's but i already 
had a job offer. So I was like, mm, give me that other mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Uh, bachelor's degree. Mm-hmm. I'm not giving you guys another semester. Right. But they don't care how you get the 150, whether it's through a master's program, but you just need the 150 credits. Um, you do have to take an exam, which is it consists of four parts. I took the exam a really long time ago, so I know they've made some changes. So I don't know how many parts there mm-hmm. are now. But when I I've took heard it, about this exam, it's the hardest it's the hardest exam after the bar, mm. right? So it's a very, very, very difficult exam. I spent a very long time studying for this exam because you have to take the exam in parts and you cannot take them within certain windows. Mm-hmm. And so it literally took me like a year and a half to pass this exam. So that meant like a year and a half of consistency, a year and a half of failing some parts and then retaking mm-hmm. it, trying to work and take the exam at the same time. Like I literally had to take sabbaticals from work during the summer in order to pass where I would do nothing but focus. Um, Now, ideally, most people always ask me the question, like, what's the difference between a CPA and an accountant? Do I need a CPA? What's the difference? The difference is that when you have someone that's like, okay, I'm going to be an accountant. I'm going to keep your books. I may just do your taxes. There's no real certification behind that, right? So So anybody can be an accountant? um, Or do you have to have at least an accounting degree? No. You could, I could teach you how to do bookkeeping today. No, and, not me, and girl. Then, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> not me, but somebody. Okay. Yes. I could, like, so with an accounting and, you know, tax preparers, you don't need any particular certifications. So for me, I have, like, certain um, continuing education that I have to take. Mm, so okay. I have to take, like, to ethics change to keep up the credentials. So ethics training, I have to take continuing education. So I have to be on top of what's happening in tax law, mm-hmm. what's happening in accounting, um, from just being in compliance, right? And I can't do anything because I don't want to jeopardize my license, right? So I'm licensed and like accounting. So you have something aren't. holding you accountable. I have something holding me accountable. So the people who are out here playing in these streets. It's a lot of people They're playing in these not streets. CPAs. They're not CPAs, but you guys should stop letting them play in your business. Listen, the stories. I mean, this conversation. I really and hope you, you know. I know about speaking things into existence, <laughs> and I really hope me having all these conversations <laughs> is not gonna. Get me. No, 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 no. It's gonna help. It's gonna help because we here to help, Please. right? So one thing I do want to point out a lot of times, and why people really need to be careful, is because the IRS does not care. You can never call the IRS and say. So Tanya, did Tanya did my taxes. I didn't know. Not knowing is not an excuse for the IRS. How is that fair, IRS? How is that fair? The because IRS, because it's stories. your responsibility. So from the IRS perspective, yeah, because you hear, you'll hear stories that say, um, my CPA told me they, or my accountant told, told me, me the XYZ. To, told me they filed my taxes. That You don't understand the people that, this person told me they filed my taxes. They haven't filed my taxes in four years. Why would somebody do that? I keep asking this question. I have not gotten a, a, a straight answer yet. Why would someone do that? They It may have been, a, well, I mean, consistently it couldn't have been an oversight. They could have just been bad. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand it because, they, again, I have processes. That, right? Yeah, I have processes. Like, it, it, I don't know, right? Sometimes people, they, like, still, and that's another thing, too, right? Like, you have someone with your money. Like, your money is so important. You have to make sure that you are hiring people. Because I hear stories where they're like, oh, my accountant took a half a million dollars from me, $250,000 from me. And again, that's why I always tell people, you have to be educated. Because how does somebody take all this money from you? But again, it's because if you don't understand it, you're looking for someone, again, not having processes. You're looking for someone to come in and say, I'm going to handle it. I'm going to do it. No. That's why, like, when I go through things with my clients, it's like, no, let's go through this line by line. I need you to understand exactly what's happening. I don't care if you want to do it. If you don't want to understand it, if you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. If you don't have time, time you're going to find time, right? Because it's so important. And I always tell people, I can't help you if you can't. Like, only way I can help you is if you can help help me help you, you, right? So I definitely think that in terms of how it happens, um, some people are just, you know, scammers some people just want money and they're not doing anything but you have to be careful and the thing um some things that people can ask for um to make sure one the reason why the irs is saying that it's your responsibility is because you signed the taxes Mm -hmm. so if you signed off on the taxes what you're signing off to say is that you agree with what this person has submitted Mm -hmm. to them so you can't go back and say oh well i don't know 
they they just they just because you didn't actually read it because you didn't actually read it you just signed it right and again we all know we all know you're supposed to read things before you sign it right but most people don't understand tax return so even if you gave somebody a tax return they don't understand it Mm -hmm. and so that's why like i like to go through tax returns line by line with clients because it's like no this is what's happening that's why you know Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is why this is happening even if you're getting a refund why are you getting a refund that meant the irs had too much of your money why are you getting a refund let's talk about it and so i just think that um People have to be more on top of their finances and have people be able to talk to them. I'm not saying understand everything. I don't expect my clients to understand the tax code, um, but you need to understand what's happening and why and how it affects you. So uh, you just have to hire people that are hire alive. the right people. You have to hire Lord, the right people. Yeah, pray about it. Okay. <laughs> so let's talk about the, this tax law, tax code. Is it the same thing? Tax law. Yeah, tax yeah. Code. Tax. The tax I told you code I'm not the right is. One. <laughs> Don't try me, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tax code is pretty much like that's is that what spells out like deductions, all all Mm -hmm. of the things. So deductions, in my opinion, and my opinion ain't worth much, but in my opinion, that's one of the biggest benefits of being a business owner is that we get not take advantage, but we have. I guess that's an advantage of being a business owner is you know the the being able to write. So to yes, help me to <laughs> to make it simple, I always say that being an employee, you get your money, your tax, and then you get to spend what's left, mm-hmm. right? But when you are an entrepreneur, you get your money, you get to spend it, and then you get taxed on, on what's, what's left, left mm-hmm. right? And so okay. the it it's just a um, it's a flip, but it's major. Right, because they're telling you already, oh, I'm taking 30% out your check. I'm taking 40% out your check. And then you have to live on what's left. Mm -hmm. As an entrepreneur, you have the power of saying, these are all of my expenses. I'm going to pay my expenses. You know what? What personal expenses that I'm already utilizing for business, like your vehicle, your phone, you know, all these things. What are things that I'm already paying for on my personal side that I can now make a business expense and now I can write that off? So now what that's doing is that's decreasing your profit, mm-hmm. which is in turn reducing the amount of taxes that you're going to pay. 